Welcome to Sacred Cow Shipyards, where no ship is safe from being slaughtered like a cow. Alright people, in a stark departure from our normal procedure, we're just going to get right into this episode. And I'm going to say the lead right up front. No, the wings of the X-Wing, the wings of the B-Wing, the wings of the ABC Darien stupid name shuttles that the Imperium uses are not radiators. I don't care what kind of retcon bullshit you've been fed, they are not radiators. And even if they were radiators, again, retcon bullshit, they are not only shitty radiators, they cause more problems in the universe than they solve. So this is going to be a three-part episode. I'm going to start with the easy stuff for you easy people out there. Get a little technical and then get a little, uh, I don't know, exploring the universe and explaining why this is just a fucking stupid idea. To start with, I would like you to consider your International Space Station, which is now your largest and longest operational space station you have managed to put in orbit around your tiny fucking ball. Congratulations, you have finally achieved low planetary orbit, manned low planetary orbit, for over 7,600 days. Congratulations. That's an amazing accomplishment in that totally not at all kind of way, but I understand how it's a stepping stone, so we'll just move right past that. Anyways, it's a space station, so it has to deal with heat on its own. And it does this by way of two very large arrays of radiators. In fact, they're about 7.2 meters long, about 4.4 meters wide, and they're pretty clearly identifiable as being the solar panel looking things that aren't blue. They're the shiny metal things, because shiny metal radiates heat pretty well. Anyways, now, like I said, 7.2 meters by 4.4 meters each. On the other hand, the T-65B Starfighter, which we commonly know as the original series X-Wing fighter, is only 13 meters long and 12 meters wide. Now, of course, that entire space isn't actually its wing. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to say each wing is approximately 1 meter long and approximately 5 meters wide. Thickness is somewhat immaterial in this case. So your International Space Station is running somewhere in the neighborhood of 126 square meters of heat radiators between all their various bits and pieces, assuming the information I'm staring at might or might not be correct. We're just going to use those numbers for the sake of using those numbers. And comparatively, for the X-Wing, when its strike foils are open, it's using approximately 40 square meters of radiator surface, assuming every square millimeter of those wings is dedicated to being a radiator. Now I know what you're thinking. The International Space Station is what? Somewhere in the neighborhood of 440,000 kilograms, while the X-Wing might weigh in somewhere around 5,600, and the International Space Station has seven people on board, and the X-Wing only has the one, and blah blah blah, so on and so forth, and you would be a idiot if you thought that way. Don't be an idiot. Because you know what the ISS doesn't have that the X-Wing does have? Four Incom 4L4 fuse fuel thrust engines that probably produce a lot of waste heat if they're actually running on fusion. And four time and back KX9 laser cannons which totally produce a whole lot of waste heat. And then... There's also the shielding system, there's the hyperdrive, there's the targeting system, there's the navigation system, there's the little astromech fuckwad in the back doing fuck knows what, there's the atmospheric system for keeping the little squishy human on board alive. There is all this shit producing so much goddamn excess heat. And then, on top of that, there's a power plant that can power all of that. Now, Star Wars isn't very particular about how their power plants actually work, but can you imagine the kind of power source necessary to power all of the things on even an X-Wing? The kind of energy this thing would have to be pumping out. All right, boys and girls, after this, we get to the complicated part of why this whole radiator concept is just bullshit. Um, because the energy being pumped out by the power plant is actually only part of the problem, because then you have to get into power plant efficiency. But we're going to actually take a few stops before we get there. So... For all of y'all who don't want to get all technical and shit, now is your time to bail out with the knowledge that calling the X-Wing wings radiators is just f***ing stupid when you compare it to the scale of even your space station and its radiators. The radiators on the X-Wing would have to be the size of a Star Destroyer, comparatively. And here's why. Because I know some of you goddamn neckbeards are winding up with the, well, actually, bullshit about how Star Wars has this infinitely superior technology than us and can obviously radiate heat better than us or some shit. No. The answer is no. And, well, here's why. The short story is that you humies know of four basic ways to move heat around. First is advection, which is basically the taking a heated fluid and moving it from one location to another method. Think of it as like uh, way back in your history, your squishy humans used to put hot water in bottles and then put them at the feet of the bed to keep themselves warm at night. 
That's advection. They put hot water in bottles, put it in a cold bed to keep themselves warm. They move the heat around by literally moving the liquid around. Fine. Then there's conduction. Conduction is literally the heat moving from one object to another through physical contact or the heat moving through the same object. Uh, think of it like the, the heat pipes in your graphic processing units in your computers. Those little weird copper tubes that are bolted to your GPUs. Yeah, that's how the heat gets from the processes that are making all the heat to the radiators that get rid of the heat. And well, the radiators are misnamed because the third way of getting rid of heat is called convection. And that is the transfer of heat between an object and its environment due to fluid motion. Basically, this is why blowing air over a quote-unquote radiator makes it more efficient. This is why your GPUs and your CPUs have fans on them, typically. This is why boiling water rolls in the pots. That's convection. Now, in case you were paying attention, and I sincerely hope you were paying attention, because you were clearly not idiots because you were continuing to listen to this video as I prattle on about basic physics and thermodynamics, yes, all three of those methods of moving heat around require something called a medium, something to carry the heat. Literally, it's either carrying the heat, or moving the heat through it, or letting the heat flow through it. There's something there. There's some physical material. Well, guess what outer space doesn't have? Yeah, physical material. No, I mean, yes, there is interstellar debris and gas and dust and blah blah blah, so on and so forth. There's just not enough of it to actually matter. Which brings us to our final method of moving heat around, which is called radiation, which is literally the transfer of energy by the emission of electromagnetic radiation. You know, like photons. And every single thing that has a temperature above absolute zero is emitting electromagnetic radiation. So yes, as you squishy humans are sitting there in your basements eating your Cheetos and listening to this nonsense, you are, in fact, emitting photons. Now, they are shifted into, again, the infrared spectrum, but this is basically how your forward-looking infrared systems actually work. They don't see you, they see the energy you're putting off. Incidentally, this is also why they don't work through glass. Glass is an insulator, so it doesn't allow the infrared radiation to pass through it. This complicates firefighting on your surface ships, but that's a different conversation for a different video. Anyways, Radiation is basically the only way to get rid of heat in space. That is to say, you have to have the panels, like on your ISS, that literally emit photons to get rid of the heat. Now, I, I guess technically you could do some sort of advection thing with some sort of sacrificial mass that is as cold as you possibly could make it before you left port and then you dumped all of your heat into it and then like chunked it over the side, but you're going to run out of mass really, really fast. So we're just going to fixate on radiation as the primary means of getting rid of heat in space for the time being. Now again, y'all are not fucking idiots, so you're probably wondering how much energy you could actually pump out by emitting photons. It's a really good question. Incidentally, this is why you squishies have such a concept as glowing red hot, glowing yellow hot, and glowing white hot. That light you're seeing coming off that metal is actually the radiation coming off of that metal due to its heat. It's just that it's producing enough energy that it's leaking out of the infrared band into your visible spectrum band. A lot of energy. You think. But not really. So here's the deal. Assuming you have the most perfect radiator ever, the most energy you can pump out of it per square unit of surface on it is the temperature of it to the fourth power times what's called the Stefan Boltzmann constant. Yeah, this is where the math gets really fucky. The Stefan Boltzmann constant is basically 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8 watts times the meters to the negative 2 power times the temperature to the negative 4 power. Now, the negatives cancel out because we are looking at a square meter of space, and like I said in the first equation, we are raising the temperature to the fourth power. The basic takeaway from all of this, to, to, to try and put a TLDR on all this nonsense, is that for every degree Kelvin that your radiator surface is above its surrounding ambient temperature, you can get rid of a ridiculously small wattage of heat, like negligible. It's kind of absurd. Now, the good news is assuming you're not actually in line of sight of a star inside of a solar system, space is pretty cold around you. We'll go ahead and assume that it's just zero Kelvin. So anything better than that is going to radiate some heat off into space. But again, we're talking about 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8 watts. In other words, to go back to the X-wing and it's, what do we say, 40 square meters of radiator space? 
those wings would have to be running at somewhere near oh negative 192 centigrade to get rid of the same energy as one of those old incandescent bulbs that apparently y'all don't use anymore so really no big deal right negative 192 centigrade is totally doable in outer space when you're talking about zero kelvin being 273 negative right no big deal right right no really big deal because he that's assuming perfect emissivity, which we don't have because this is not a black body winged ship. It, it isn't. And also, we're not just talking about a light bulb. We're talking about enough energy to propel this vehicle at supersonic speeds in an atmosphere when it is not aerodynamic. We're talking about hyperdrives. We're talking about shields. We're talking about laser cannons. We're talking about all this shit. And all of this shit produces even more heat than it technically should because, of course, it's not thermally perfect. Your current nuclear reactors operate on about one-third efficiency, meaning that if their power output is a thousand megawatts, they're actually generating three thousand megawatts of power, and that other two thousand turns into heat. Two thousand megawatts. Extra heat. Just to get a thousand megawatts out the door. And then the transmission lines are not thermally perfect. And then the end products are not thermally perfect. Now, yes, theoretically, the Star Wars universe almost certainly has room temperature superconductors, but there is still loss. You're still playing the game. Entropy is still non-consensually f***ing you in an orifice. Now are those X-Wing wings or ABC Darien shuttle wings perfect emitters? Of course they're f***ing not. Are they capable of retaining their structural integrity and utility at the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of degrees centigrade they would have to be operating at in order to disperse all the excess weight heat that everything on the X-Wing is generating? I mean, Star Wars has magic metal, so why the fuck not? But that is kind of my point. See, this is the entire problem with all of the retcons that happen in the Star Wars universe. I remember way back when, because apparently I am that old, because, well, I've been doing this job for a while now. Well, not the videos, just the shipyard shit. When the explanation for the Millennium Falcon shape was simply an artistic one, and it boiled down to, it looked like a hamburger. I wish I was making that up. I'm totally not. The Millennium Falcon was modeled after one of your hamburgers. No shit. Not even kidding. But instead of just leaving the situation right there and happy, and it's simply an artistic design and deal with it oh no now we had to retcon in this absolutely fucking garbage about how the yt-1300 freighters are designed to like hold these ridiculously stupid cargo containers between their front mandibles and do this whole like reverse train bullshit of like cargo containers in front of them and they push them around or some goddamn nonsense what the fuck is that shit leave the story alone Yes, some yehu in Corellian Engineering Corporation's engineering department decided that putting these mandibles on the front of these freighters made sense. I don't know, it would seem like a good idea at the time. Just leave it there. Why did you have to make up more bullshit that made even less sense? The same thing holds with the whole, like, wings in Star Wars are radiators. No, they're fucking not. They're not big enough and they're not hot enough. And even if they were radiators, why do only some ships care about that? Do you see any massive radiator banks on a Star Destroyer? No, you fucking don't. Do you see any massive radiator banks on the Mon Calamari cruisers? Hell no. How about the Death Star? That thing literally has a hypermatter annihilation reactor at its core. Can you imagine the heat leakage coming off that thing? You see any heat sinks? I sure as fuck don't. I mean, if you wanted to be a total idiot, you could make the argument that the heat sinks are built into the armor of all these ships, so the armor is what's radiating out the energy. But in that case, all you would have to do to disable a ship is just down its shields and then just shoot the shit out of its armor, and the crew will just fucking cook. In other words, Star Wars was simply better when they weren't paying attention to details like how you get rid of heat in space. As long as it was universal in the universe, you could just glide right past that and get along back of your story. But as soon as you introduce the notion somewhere, it has to make sense everywhere. And it fucking doesn't. So sure, you want to argue that the X-Wing strike foils open up because stylistic reasons? Fine. Whatever. You want to make the argument them, them being less accurate is somehow better? Well, that's dumb, but sure. Again, whatever. You want to make the argument that those are radiators? Fine. They're fucking useless, they're goddamn pointless, and they cock up the entire universe. Congratulations. Entropy is still non-consensually f***ing you in an orifice. And that's all from Sacred Cow Shipyards.
Please be advised that any ship left on the docks for more than 24 hours will be compressed to a cube. Have a nice day.